Okay, here Michael Neff, director of Gear Sports, and uh, the last video in the series of shaft videos is going to be the ratio number that we give you here. And uh, um, this is basically uh, Curtis and Lexi Thompson. This is Lexi here. This is Curtis here. And uh, I, I, I'm using this video obviously because they're they're using the exact same club, and I'll I'll kind of overlay them here. So again really the shaft deflection and re the droop is basically the difference between these two if you divide that number by that number you get 0.73 and really we want that relationship or that ratio to be as low as possible now Lexi is probably never going to get to 0.5 um, or she's probably never no matter what I give her she's probably never going to get the deflection low enough um, to where you know she could get this ratio down so um, and the club would probably be so stiff that it would feel terrible to her but um, high deflective players like Lexi or players that kind of offend the shaft or crack the whip or whatever are going to have these high ratios and I often get asked so how do I get the ratio down well in this case, we've got to go stiffer with Lexi. No question. The shaft is definitely not, not even though she hit it in the middle here, we're going to manage T height. And all the, she hit 10 balls, and they were kind of all over the place with this driver. And she even said that the driver felt soft to her at 100 miles per hour. And her brother said it didn't feel soft at all. It felt really solid to him. Interesting, isn't it? Um, so basically, in these numbers, 0.73, this is I can live with this if she were to she she's not that far away with this club this is actually pretty similar to her gamer but she would definitely probably prefer um, something a little tighter that would get our shaft kick in the negative range that would get our deflection down our droop down a little bit the ratio would come down but if I just stiff, stiffen the shaft if my deflection went down my droop would go down too so the ratio would kind of go down together um, it wouldn't necessarily mean that I'm going to get to 0 0.5 like I am with Curtis so this is he's basically deflections half the droop we want to get this number as low as we can for consistent face mapping consistent ball speed consistent launch conditions and then we can adjust the head once we have the shaft kind of tied down in this in this good pattern this good ratio then we can adjust if we're hitting the same spot over and over again then we can adjust the length or the loft or whatever we need to to get the ball in the middle of the club to produce the results that we're after. So anyways, the ratio that we're looking for is something relatively low, as low as we can get. Um, I happen to be a real kind of really fast grip speed kind of, um, or excuse me, real low grip speed kind of crack the whip kind of guy. And no matter what I try, I've tried that that really, really stiff, uh, that, what's that, that uh, by matrix one that Bubba Watson uses and then I've tried that uh, nunchuck shaft it's like really stiff and this is about as good as I can get my ratio to and that's just the dynamic of the way I swing the golf club so you got to be paying attention to these numbers and this this club fits Curtis very well these numbers are extremely good negative shaft kick droop to deflection ratio of 0.5 and he basically hit 10 balls like within a few millimeters of each other right in the face and so this 8.5 x shaft you know is going to be really pretty tight uh, pretty good for him and it's what he's playing and he's a great driver of the golf ball and uh, Lexi's playing something a little stiffer uh, and this this information can really help you understand where you need to go with a player from a shaft dynamic um, so I hope you've enjoyed this series of videos from uh, the shaft Ultimately, what we're trying to do is understand what the shaft is doing. What is what is the shaft doing to the head? And, you know, just in kind of closing here with this shaft series, um, Gears and Enzo are the only two products in golf that um, measure the shaft uh, XYZ coordinates accurately. And what we're doing um, in the Enzo system is not in production now. There's only two of them in the world. And we have 50 gear systems so you're going to see a lot of data coming off of shaft from gears and this is really kind of what separates us from the pack so we're able to give you body data we're able to give you body data wrist data shaft data head data 
So we're we're be able to measure what the body is doing to the wrists, what the wrists are doing to the club or the shaft, the grip, and what the grip is doing to the shaft and what the shaft is doing to the head. So that really is how we separate ourselves. We're the only ones that do that. Nobody else in golf does that. It's really important information. It's it's not um, what the golf club is doing is really critical to understand so that we're not fighting this golf club and our student at the same time. We want to get our players into something that, that works for them so that we can just focus on, on fixing their swing dynamics and not, and not having um, the golf club um, telling us, you know, or, you know, confusing your student on what you're trying to tell them. So if you have your golf club fit properly and, and the golf club is in good shape and you know that it's, all these numbers look good, then you know you can really just focus on your player and you know you don't have any uh, variables that are going to throw you off. So anyways, that's my little plug for Gears. I hope you enjoyed the series. This is a very complex topic um, and uh, I'm really excited to learn more about it as we go forward. We're going to be adding some more metrics here pretty soon. And uh, I hope you really enjoyed this series. And please let me know if you have any questions or any feedback. Thank you very much.